Hello and welcome to a demo video of Merchants of Infinity, the new game from Rogue Artist Creations. This is still in the playtest stage. We're waiting on future final art from some wonderful people all around the globe and stay posted for seeing how that develops. In the meantime, let's show you about the game. The idea is this is a merchant trading game set in space on a space station on the fractal edges of dimension. Along the way, there'll be a certain amount of worker placement, resource management, bit of set collection, a little bit of auctioning, a certain amount of hand management. The idea is to use lots of different mechanics to really show how we've moved on in game design and show an even better version than before. So what you do is you're in charge of a number of traders. You yourself are a merchant. So on your turn, you'll basically place your merchant, your traders out at different positions to try and collect resources available on the PlayStation. There are 10 common resources. You have jewels, Navigation, books, fuel, food and drink, fashion, ore, souvenirs, tools and creatures. Now the idea is you collect a variety of different resources that suits your needs for that turn. Now, depending on how you're going to score different points will depend on a few things. For a start, the different commodities are worth a different amount each turn depending upon the market value, which can change each turn. So for example, if navigation is worth nine points this turn, it might be worth seven points the next. So this may depend on which combination suits you best if you're going for market values. However, you might not wish to do that. You may wish to visit one of the spaceports, of which there are two. At the spaceports, you can pick up a ship order, which needs a nice, a nice variety of goods, and different combinations can score you different amount of points. Anything from 20 up to 35 or more with different bonuses. Now, you will have a certain amount of cards that you have to fulfill at any one point. Now, these are kept secret in the other place. They don't know exactly what you're after. You might also be able to pick up from the black hole, a trading place, some bonus side missions. So you might have things like delivery missions, bounty missions, or even espionage, where you can basically win some bonus points just by happening to have a person in the right place. If things don't go too well and you can't get the combination that you want, you can always visit the Steam Lab right in the middle, where you can basically trade in the goods you've got for a roll of the dice. So in any way, whichever shape, form you can do, there's always ways to score points. So what might a typical turn look like? Let's imagine that the market looks like this. The way that you actually determine first player in this game, I wanted something a bit unique, something that, that hadn't really done, been done before. So the idea is there's a mini game called Cogs. Before the market starts trading, all the traders are basically getting together and bragging and psyching each other out and trying to get a mental one-up against on their opponents. So, you have a mini hand of cards. You're able to play up to five cards at a time, and depending on the combination of these, you will basically work out who goes first. So let's imagine on my turn I choose to play three cards. I will play a two, a zero, and a one. Now all the opponents know is I'm playing three cards face down, which are revealed one at a time. So... The zero cards might not actually have much worth in themselves, but they're good to psych out to the players. So each turn, a card is revealed. So, for example, I reveal a two. The other player manages to reveal... Oh, no, they swapped two players' hands. I'd have to swap my hand with somebody else. My next card would be a zero, and finally a one. So I'd have three points less than anything else is untoward. And the idea is whoever has got the highest position goes first. So turn order. Red players presumably doing very, very well. They've got first brown player and then let's say black player is next so this is the turn order now depending upon how many people are playing you play a different number of turns so if there are two players you can play up to six turns whereas for example if you're only on four or five players you may wish to play less right red's going first now red in their hand happens to have some cards that need a variety of tools. Now, this is fantastic, but very, very hard to get because each of these commodity spaces may only take three traders before they are full. So once three people are there, it's occupied. You can't put any more down. So the red, if they want to try and go for this this turn and they are going first, they've got advantage. So they're definitely going to put a trader there. Now, looking at the tools, the other players might think eight points. That's not too bad. Well, why didn't they go for or if all was worth 10, maybe they're up to something. So Black decides that they're going to go and score some ore. Why not get 10 points? Fantastic. Now, Brown might choose to go to the spaceport and pick up 
one of the three available missions. So they might choose to pick up, this one here is worth 30 points, you would need two souvenirs and some fashion. So immediately that gets replaced with a new card. There's always three available on that side, always three available on that side if you go to either of the spaceports. Now, let's imagine that Red chooses to go to the Black Hole to pick up a side mission. There's different ones available. Normally, there are single single um, quantity knees which are worth five points, or sometimes a double or variety which are worth ten. So in this case, they choose to pick up this one since they will have a person in the fashion department. So they keep this in their hand, unseen to the players, and they continue to play. So Brown decides to go for all for 10 points, and Black decides to go for one of the station spaces. Now these are extra special effect places, which do a certain amount of bonus features. So they might make things worth more or gain extra credits, which are platinum in this game, or they might get you more cards or allow you to set the market next turn or double the reward. Now let's imagine they choose to go to Honest Trading, which just scores them seven platinum. Now we need to replace the black hole card and the game goes on. So the idea is you can score up to three resources each turn, just three. So let's imagine that by the end of the turn, Red has managed to acquire all three of their tools by cunning leading the other players astray. Let's imagine Brown has got a variety here and let's imagine Black has got here. Now Red may have gone a couple of spaces as may have Black and Brown. So, once all the players have placed their pieces out, you resolve the scoring. The first thing you do is look to see if anyone has gone to the auction. Now, the auction is a very, very useful space where if you miss out on the commodity that you want, you can bid to try and get an extra resource which will help you complete a set if someone else filled out your space. Next is the black hole cards. If anyone happens to have a person on this place, then they can choose an extra bonus reward. They don't have to use that trader for that resource. All they have to do is just have a person there. So let's imagine if Red just happened to have somebody on the fashion department and the souvenir department, they would choose to have a bonus 10 points there. After that, after that we go to ship orders. Well, as you can see, Red has managed to complete their full sets. They would, they would take their three people back and put it on the card which shows that they can't be used for anything else. Now you resolve design. If you managed to have failed to get the combination that you wanted, you can choose to give up the number of resources that you wanted. So let's imagine that Brown wanted to give up two resources, send them off to the design lab. Two times five is 10 points. So that got that 10 points there, two resources. Finally, it's everything else. So you resolve the other spaces. So for example, black would earn a seven platinum for their trader and you resolve any extra devices. So at the end of each turn, all the scoring is resolved, everyone has got their traders back and you begin again for a new round. So let's look at round the board. We do have the different station spaces which are always positive effects to help your players. As an option, but by no means obligatory, there are some Nova spaces down here which do a variety of negative effects. This is an optional extra for those that do like a bit of player versus player PvP in their game, but by no means are they compulsory. If everyone agrees to use them, they can be used, but if people aren't comfortable with using them, you can just play a positive game instead. Other things to point out are the School of Thought. This is basically where you can get an extra apprentice trader to add to your collection of people, and you use for an extra trader until, of course, someone else on a later turn decides to go for there and then they steal the trader for themselves. The only other feature is here, the fractal mirror space. The idea is since this is based around fractal space, by observing reality, you change reality. So every single turn to make things slightly different is a random change in the setup of the board. So each turn you choose to draw another card from the deck. For example, on this turn, this world has no jewels. So this is an alternative reality where the jewels can resource is unavailable and this changes every single turn which means that no turns are the same no games are the same so there's a lot of replayability factored in ultimately it's very enjoyable because the games are quite close 
There's lots of different strategies going. You could basically choose to just score the points this turn or try to play the long game by stacking up bonuses on cards. You could just try to get as much bonus points as possible each turn. You could basically keep a card that's worth a lot of points for a longer time and lose, use it later on. There's lots of nice talking. People have a good time chatting about it. A bit of good, good nature banter when you basically try and get in on somebody else kind of before they wanted it. But realistically, you are going to have a lot of fun with this game. It's not going to take up your entire evening. We've played different, we've different sample games between about an hour, 45 minutes, up to two hours if you want to play a very long game with lots of people, but it will not eat up your entire evening. It's lots of good fun. We're awaiting fantastic new designs and working with artists from Malaysia and um, Indonesia and Argentina for fantastic design. And we'll keep you posted as the further news comes in. But it's going to look amazing when it's done. It's going to play really, really well. Playtesting has been very, very positive so far. And it's hopefully going to come towards Kickstarter when it's ready next year.